Hey up guys, it's Kyle here and welcome to Overlooked. Today we'll be looking at Flower, a game that came out on the PlayStation Network in 2009. And as the name suggests, this game was very overlooked. Loved by the people who played it, hated and dismissed by those who didn't. I'm going to attempt to show you the fun and interesting side of this game and perhaps change some of your opinions if you're a bit iffy towards this game, or maybe you've never even heard of it. So, Flower. First of all, let's have a look at why some people would dismiss this game. Well, it looks immensely queer. Like it was made for little girls, basically. If you've heard anything about this game, then you'll know it's all controlled via the 6-axis, which some people see as a massive gimmick in most games. And I guess that's just because it's not all... People may also dismiss this game because it only has 6 levels, and that's not including the credits level. It's also one of those games that just look really bad from the outside. The type of game that needs to be played to be understood. Let me try and show you why I personally enjoy this game. Well, first of all, it's so unique. Try and name me one game where you do the things that you do in this game, and I can't think of any. Not even one that is similar. Nothing compares to this. The so-called gimmick of the 6-axis is so far from it. Flower uses the 6-axis like no other game, and it's the only way to play, and therefore the devs made it so finely tuned that any small movement is translated to the game, which makes for such a fluid and smooth experience. Also, when you hit the flowers on the ground, they chime. Fantastic. The game has six very different levels that will have you doing different things every time. The first level is very bright and vibrant and easy to play, as you'd expect from the first level to be. The second level will have you applying colour to the world, as the story is depicted you are in the place that has become so industrial it's lost all nature's beauty. The third level will have you speeding through the world faster than Sonic the Hedgehog, which also activates the wind turbines to give the place its power, nature at its best. As we hit the next level it turns dark, and this becomes one of my favourite levels. You have to apply light to all the areas, and you give off illumination, and you make all the grass glow in the night. Unfortunately, this level takes a dark turn at the end. The fourth level will have you battling through all the man-made broken down pylons in the middle of the fields. When you touch them, you lose petals and you get electrocuted. This part of the game takes a more serious tone. But don't despair, once you've rid the fields of the nasty, it's now your job to give the entire city some colour. It's a spectacle to say the least. The true definition of flower power. And at the end you rise through the oppression and you make a big huge cherry blossom tree thing in the middle of a big city. I don't understand it either, but you know what, it looks fucking awesome, so I don't even care. You can also swap levels at any time, even mid-game. It also offers a little cutscene slash movie if you put your controller down, and each level has a different one. Oh, and I can't forget, the music in this game is absolutely top-notch. Every level has its own little score, even the main menu, the main menu changes the score depending on which flower you're looking at. And oh my god, it's just so brilliant. I mean, even if you don't like the game, you can't deny that the soundtrack is the most relaxing thing you've ever heard in your life. The game is also really simple. There's no pressure to win or go really fast. You just take your time, you got your own pace, and enjoy what the game has to offer. I mean, would you rather play a game like this? Or a game like this. Oh, Of course you're gonna pick Flower. Nah, but seriously though guys, it's just one of those games you really need to play for yourself to understand why it's so good. It really is based all on personal opinion, how you interpret story in the game, which is another reason why I feel this is so unique in its own way. Furthermore, this game's just a total fucking masterpiece and you should give two shits whether or not you admit to enjoying this game or not. Also, small little side note, any button you press, makes the wind move, so it really doesn't matter which button you press, but that's just a little side note, it's just a little thing on the controls, you don't really need to know that, but you know, it is nice to know. Also, the game is very cheap now, I've been told it's around £6, and in America I think it's about $10, I'm not too sure, don't quote me on that, but it's still very, very cheap. It was a bit more expensive when I got the game, but I think it's definitely worth the money, especially if the price is reduced. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. If I haven't changed your opinion, let me know why. And if you feel like it, you can leave some games below that you love and no one else does. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Please do leave a like if you'd like. And I'll see you guys later. Peace!